Hello and welcome to MCC TV International Show. My name is John David. I'm the Business Department Coordinator. I teach statistics, I teach economics, and also I'm the host for this show. You know, I, this is the first show or the first episode for this season. And as I walk into the studio, I was really amazed. I was really wow, saying just wow. Uh, you. Everybody needs to be here in the studio to see the huge difference that Chad Bishop is uh, is making to our studio here at MCC and as ob obviously the local channels here in Muscatine. So thank you, Chad, for uh, producing uh, this show. Thank you also for doing uh, the what I call the unbelievable uh, things to to this studio here and making it look very, very professional. Uh, as I always say, you know, uh, our show is a special show because we bring special people to be our guests too. And today's show is no different. Today's show, we are bringing a father, a mother, and their daughter to tell their story with us and with all of you. So it is my honor to basically present to you Melita, Rita, and Melvin to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank Hello. you. How are you? Good. I'm doing great. Excellent. We are very happy to have you with us today, and we are very happy to listen and hear Melita's story that you are planning to share with us and with all our audience. But first of all, I would like to ask each one of you to introduce yourself, please. Uh, first, um, Melvin Duo uh, Melita Dodd, an uh, immigrant for Liberia, Africa, I mean West Africa. Um, I'm Melita Mom. My name is Rita Beer, an immigrant from West Africa, Liberia, but passed through Guinea before entering the United States. Um, and now Melita. <laughs> my name is Melita Duo. I was born in Africa, but then I came here. It, uh, you came here at a very, very young age, I assume, right? I was eight months old. Eight months old. So uh, did you have a chance to go back and visit Liberia no. since? No. So, okay. So perhaps maybe in the future you will have a chance to go and visit uh, the native country of your mom and dad. And, and also you. Uh, well, we are here, first of all, to talk to you about a little bit about your home country, your native country, Liberia. Uh, what do you do here in Muscatine? And, and then we switch gears, and then we start talking about other issues, too. So if you just share with us some information, some, some interesting information about Liberia, would be a really excellent start for the show. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor DB. As I said earlier, my name is Melvin uh, Melita Dai. Uh, Liberia is formed in West Africa. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, after a 14 years of the Civil War, you know, uh, there was a help from the other countries who came to uh, gaining articles and Actually, my wife and my daughter, they were taken to Guinea. Later, they were successful to travel to the United States today. And uh, I've left behind a little bit. But now we're standing, we will come to that later, but Liberia is a very easy and good country that love every neighbor. Uh, we produce at a good food and, you know, a spicy food, but if I say good, you should know African food, actually. It's, it's very spicy, so. Very spicy, uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, if you want to eat it, you should, you should know, I know how to eat it, and you should, you should ice before eating it. If not so, you will be running in, you know, somewhere else. But however, uh, we have some interesting thing, like uh, uh, Liberia in West Africa is one of the oldest country uh, that is 172 years old right now. Uh, we have uh, some interesting thing like uh, iron ore, which have 75% uh, proof of uh, iron ore. I think many 
countries always uh, take that into consideration. They come for it and they carry it. Sometimes they share it with their own because they say, according to their percentage, it's, it's less than ours. Uh, besides that, we have uh, some fruit that, you know, when I've entered the United States since three years ago, I can see it in Walmart, in other stores, uh, they call it some as uh, avocado, uh, pear, uh, cassava, uh, and so on, the list go on. So uh, Liberia is so exciting, and even today, I'm here proud to be a Liberian. Thank you, Mr. John I'm, 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 I'm very happy to hear that, and I'm sure you know our, our audience are appreciating this information too. And we know that we do have uh, a Liberian community here in Muscatine, and, and uh, by dealing with you as a community, and based on my experience with you, I noticed that you are a very, um, very a strong community in a sense that the family relation and the ties to each other is still very strong. Most probably is something you brought from back in your native country all the way here, and you continue to do that here. So is this something that you are trying to teach your kids, for example, and other people's kids, the same thing, so that they grow up learning uh, your heritage and your culture. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Even if I, when I, when I enter in uh, Muscatine, the first thing I was saying, I'm exciting, is the diversity. Mm -hmm. Because you guys consider all of all to be like, you know, we are one, you know, we are the daughter of some of you people because we were a little bit colonized on all the ACS. So you're considered all. And the most important thing is uh, many of the librarians doesn't just say it, uh, they work and also pay tax. So it's also uh, an impact to help the uh, United States government you know, with their uh, uh, infrastructure development. So uh, I'm here today and I'm very excited, as I said earlier, that the diversity that you guys brought among us, I'm very you know, I'm excited to it. And it is very important because our diversity is what makes us very strong as, as, as a community, as a city, and as a nation. So we are very happy to have you also with us too. Uh, you know, as we know that the purpose of the show is basically to ask Milita to tell her story uh, to our audience and to talk to her about what she learned from her experience and to share that with our audience and with all of us too. So Melita, I want to go back to you and can you tell us something about your story? When you started, for example, uh, when you started to feel a little bit different, for example, uh, what did you do? Uh, is it was scary to you, for example, to know that, for example, you uh, are diagnosed with cancer. Uh, it was a big thing for, for a kid. You know, I assume it's not a simple thing to hear about that, let alone your parents, obviously. I'm sure it wasn't a, a, a very uh, easy kind of news that you guys experienced. So let's start t talking about your story. Tell us, how did you learn about it first? Who told you? Uh, what do you think your parents did then, I mean, to make sure uh, that you are okay. And let's talk about the community, your schools. Uh, and I'm very interesting, uh, interested to know about your schools. Uh, okay, how did they, your classmates, help you? Uh, your teachers, your principal, and so on. So let's talk about all that stuff. Okay. Um, I first learned about it, well, I was a pretty smart kid, so like, I could hear my parents and the doctors like talking and discussing and then like I could like hear what they were what was going on like what they were saying about me and like I understood most some of it not like the overall all of it mm -hmm. but then like my mom told me later on like what I had I'm like oh I wasn't really scared mm -hmm. like I was it was a bad feeling but at the same time I was fine mm -hmm. Cause like, and how old were you at that point when you learned about it? Um, seven. She was seven years old. Okay, and I'm I'm sure for seven years old, no matter what, 
is still, you know, it's uh, for us as as adults sometimes, it's, and, uh, and news like that can be yes. uh, a big we, shock, yeah. Yeah. and it takes us forever to 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 process that kind of information. So, so how how did you handle that when you knew about it? Well, I didn't like really cry or anything. I just like. I was calm about it mostly. Okay. Uh, actually, and how how your parents reacted to that? Um, really, she was diagnosed with that in 2015, June 26th on Friday. I take her to the emergency in Muscatine, Iowa, and the doctor told me that she have a mask, and I don't really know what it mask. So they asked me if they can take her to Iowa City. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, but I start searching, researching, and I know that when you have a mass, it means that you either have cancer or different types of cancer. That's what we think of. Yeah, that's what I think of. That's what just ran into my mind. So after a few hours, I was in Iowa City, and then the doctor who was coming in, they was all hiding their badge, all that. So I asked the lady, I was like, why are you hauling your ID or that? She was like, because I don't want you to know that I'm a cancer doctor because mm -hmm. we are not tell you yet and you are very young. Mm -hmm. And I was feeling really bad because as a young mom, I was like 14 going to 15 when I had her in um, West Africa, Guinea. Uh -huh. I had her in the capital city of Guinea, Conakry. Uh -huh. and I know what all I went through, and my dream was to raise her up for her to be the better person for me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I know in Africa, as a young age like that, to get pregnant, and a lot of people tell you a lot of stuff that you don't want to hear. And for you to come to United States, the great place where everybody wants to come, and I'm here. And later they start telling me that the child is ill or that. Mm -hmm. I was kind of like so angry in my heart, but I didn't really put it outside. And I didn't show to her that I was angry or I was mad about it. But later they asked me if I can bring some family over. And most of the time during the situation, my family were always <coughs> there, the Bia family, my dad, Mose Bia, all of the Muscatine Liberian community was always there for me, and especially my mom. I call that my mom because she sponsored us uh -huh. in most situations. Bonnie Reef and her husband, Paul Reef, they attend Church of Christ and also the member of Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. It was ready and there and I for us. I assume you know it it is it, it, formation like that can be really tough yes. to process yeah uh, Melvin you have yeah uh, what I want to say is uh, first day I would say a great fight a great yeah. fight when I say a great fight what does that mean uh, there was a lot of things we went on a, when yeah. when you are diagnosed mm -hmm. as a uh, cancer patient and when you don't know anything you have no access on it. There are a lot of things. But in this particular uh, devastation, we go through a lot. There was no job because at every movement, you had to take her to the hospital just in case, just for common thing. So you don't have to work. You don't have any furnace. You don't have to do anything. And on this uh, particular devastation, she was there as a very a strong daughter, very little child, but she was very strong. She, she, she don't really, you know, say anything. When you ask her, oh, uh, Melita, what can we do? You know, are you ready to take her? She said, yes, daddy, I want to be free. And even on that, if we got to the hospital, anytime she laying down on that treatment, any drip whatsoever she on her, she always say, daddy, when am I going home? I want to go to school. I want to go to school. So I, I was so proud of her and I was really on her by because mm -hmm. she always come to school first. So I wanted for her to be safe, and um, which of course her mom too were there. You know, mm -hmm. we all were working in collaboration, and within days there was a lot of uh, uh, individual schools, mm -hmm. and international NGO, NGOs, 
company that help us to in the situation because at time riches there can be no uh, uh, gas in the car to even go for food and eat. At time riches there is no food for us to eat because but yet and still we have to save for her to be safe. So we have like uh, a mechanic school in marketing. Marketing school district while she was going there they used to help her do something like fifty dollars gas car, something like after every two months seventy five dollars gas car Something like after two months again, another you know hundred dollars get cut. And besides that, we have a, a, a international organization they call uh, Make a Wish. Make a Wish took her from here to, to travel to Florida, you know, to show her those places just to make her happy, so she can focus and take her treatment at the appropriate time. So for her to be safe, so it's like they were there to you know encouraging her so she can be safe. And then from Make a Wish too, we have uh, another NGO they call Dance Maritime. Then Maritain too was there, you know, taking her to those various camps, you know, giving her a, uh, after three months, they gave her a 150 gas card. At a time, all parents, you know, they all, all the then swap away because what they understand in the African way is if you are, you know, encounter or if you notice that somebody is that know with cancer, if you go to visit this person or if you go to even touch this person, you will also be diagnosed with cancer. So many of them, you know, they drag away, they start feeding, you know, uh, misery, feeding a little bit yes. like different uh, on the family. But yet and still, we don't feel, you know, like getting away from our daughter, we don't feel like, you know, she, I don't even actually, when I get to America later, I don't feel that she even knows her cancer because I have the great faith with God in heaven that she's going to get huge from it. If she has something, then if, if it is anything, it may affect me. So I had to make sure for her to be safe. So there were a lot of things we went through, but we just praise God. And at this stage, she has been pronounced cancer free. So I just want to get the first thanks to the entire American society. And... To be more specific, to come to the uh, University of Iowa Hospital and Clinic Cancer <coughs> in Iowa City, and also to come back to Muscatine, our uh, council, our city council, our members, and all uh, Christian community in Muscatine to get a very big thing because without them, or who have been then, who have been sitting at this stage discussing this issue. Yeah. So hey. I'm very grateful and yeah. I'm excited to even sit here today and a very big one too to you as you know, organizing this team, bringing us here to explain our story. Yeah. Nevertheless, uh, on this <clears throat> particular story, she come out after she had been pronounced free, she, she came to me, she said, Dali, uh, when I was on this stream, and there was a lot of people came to speak to me. I see my nurses coming to me with food. I see other people, you know, giving her gas. What can we do as giving back to the other kids that I saw, because through this problem, there are many people we make them there, we, and we still left them there too when we leave and they start crying if it were their time. So what can we do to, to help people in the same situation? So when she asked this question, it was a very big question for me as a dad. So I decided to tell her, up, uh, Medita, how do you get a question from? But just give me a little time, I'm going to answer your question. She said, what does it mean? I said, no, just give me a little time. So when I went out, I do a little bit, you know, like searching, checking, I was there. That question where the, the guy asked is a very big one. Like, I can just go to work and get a 500 uh, uh, check. If I donate a 500 check, the doctor who even gave the first prescription, his or her pay, it cannot even require this 500. So that is, I'm just in a working class, but I don't have money. So what I decided to do, I tried to call her mom. I said, uh, mommy, this is why your, your, your daughter asked, what can we do? To, to do, I mean, to give back to the other kid who in the same situation. So from one thing to another, we started discussing. She come up, she said, okay, what we can do, we all decided to, to say, okay, what we can do is let her create, let her form a little organization and ask for donation. And then when we receive this donation, we are going to give back to the cancer children too at the very hospital. Not only at the very hospital, because even the first data who diagnosed her when he carried her to uh, Iowa City, it was a cancer data from uh, Dada, Texas. Mm -hmm. So those places you need to visit there so she can see what they do on cancer patients because on her treatment, she may not recall all. 
Yes. For, yeah, for what, you know, the deck to hop, only we see some, and there was no way to say we're going to take picture of it, because when you get there, all your camera had to be off and all that stuff, because it was a very technical uh, 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 work when it comes to science. So, coming to that, the Greystone, we found a, she had a Greystone International Charity. She icing the entire world today, whether musketing, out of musketing, uh, the, the entire American individual, international NGO, companies, donors, anywhere, everywhere, so they can come on our ill to help the organization. The organization is tax uh, exempt deductible. So if you can donate to the organization, so we can be able to, to help the other kids. She has started it. Uh, we first have a, a, a little girl to in Cedar Rabbit. She was diagnosed as birth cancer. You know, we gave some donation there, but it was less. And now she had decided to visit this particular uh, University of Iowa on Thanksgiving to, to give another donation to some kids. So now we are asking the entire uh, American international worldwide so they can come on our hill to help with this organization to improve mm -hmm. because we don't have money to do all of this thing. Uh -huh. But we have to give back to the people because she is safe. Okay. Well, it, it is an amazing story, and uh, and uh, I'm very happy uh, to see you here with us, uh, obviously. Uh, what you went through for a kid is not an easy an easy thing. Uh, obviously, your parents, what they went through also because of that, also it's not an easy thing. And I assume uh, we do have some pictures uh, that uh, our producer, Chad Bishop, will start rolling uh, uh, soon. And as we see the pictures, if we can just like perhaps yeah. maybe say a couple things about each picture. Uh, but, uh, oh, and here, I, I, see, I see the first one here. So if, um, if uh, we can uh, briefly talk about each picture, would be great too. Yeah, um, that's, picture, that's Kat, uh, Melita and her grandma. That's my mom. Uh -huh. She been there. She like a second mom to, uh, to Melita. She always there. Even when I want her in the night or need her mm -hmm. in the middle of the night, she uh -huh. always there. Like in a hospital, it's very, very hard for others to come when you call them. They sometimes scared because they feel that they're going to be diagnosed with the same thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody stay away, but my mom, she never she was always she there. Was always there. Yeah, yeah. Ama amazing. Yeah, that is part of that. Okay, uh, what do we see here? Yeah, the next picture. The next picture you see over there is it is it, it sound you know you know amazing, because when you see that particular sound, the, that that is there's something great coming after. That special we took him when, when we got to the hospital and uh, Dr. Morin came out to say, oh, uh, a few months from now, in fact, the, the next appointment time, you know, Medita will be diagnosed cancer-free. So the parents too got together, you know, they were so exciting, with, including Medita, so everybody was just, you know, sharing, you know, hugging each other. Very, very happy news. Yeah. Very, yeah. Happy. very happy news. Okay. Um, yeah. Wow. Wow. That's that story. Okay. Here is the third pictures here. So, what are we looking at here? Um, that's M Mrs. Ree, the sponsor for us, and also the one of the board member for Greystone International Charity. Mm -hmm. This lady, she's not just a sponsor; she like a mom to me. She like a mom to my husband. She like a mom to my family. She's always there. She and her husband. They are always there. She loves my kids. And every time, like Christmas, mm -hmm. any holiday, she always bring and gave. So I'm just so happy to meet somebody like that in America. I just don't even really know what to tell her. I always like call her mom because in our tradition, we don't call older person by their real name. Okay. We call them either auntie or mom. But first time she was like kind of confused why I have to mm -hmm. call her mom. When I explained that to her, she was like, "Okay, I'm your mom." So she's she's Perfect. one of the stronghold for my family. Perfect. So she's Miss Bonnie Reeve. 
Okay. What what are we seeing here? Um, <laughs> now that... you're gonna be talking about this picture, right? <laughs> oh, um, that was I don't know. Actually, I don't remember which grade it was. Mm -hmm. But that's our um, choir concert. In um, school choir yes. concert. Cool. Oh, okay. Um, I think that's McKinley. Yeah. I think that's our McKinley Choir Concert. Mm -hmm. Are you, I, I, I attend that McKinley Choir Concert almost, I would say every year, not almost, <laughs> because my kids go to McKinley. They have an amazing uh, staff, teachers, and principal. So it's like you feel you are really part of the family. Yeah. Thank you. So what are we seeing here? OK, that's me. The reason of me sending the photo was, I just want for the whole world to know, as a mom, you have to be there for your kid. Yes. When, my, when I saw my daughter going through this problem, I was disturbed with a lot of things in my mind. So in cancer, when you have, it, when you have cancer, they either either your hair or they have to shave your hair out for you to be able to go through the chemotherapy. Yes. So the first day they told me that I have to cut her hair from her hair, I was like, okay, this is so, so, I don't know how to say it, but my daughter, since she was born, I never put scissors in her hair. So when I told her that I'm going to shave your hair, she was like, no, I'm not going to shave my hair. So the best thing to do to convince her to do that because I have faith that she's going to be better, she's going to be cancer-free one day is if I cut my hair, she will be there. Uh -huh. I'm having fun. Yeah. So I, I cut my hair, and when I cut my hair, she was like, okay, mommy, I'm going to cut my hair because you look so beautiful in this photo. I was like, okay, you can do it now. So that's why I gave her that to cut her hair. Perfect. And I saw, I think, pictures... Wait, wait, while she was you, jogging. You were jogging yeah. or ru running? The yeah. she was jogging is, uh, yeah. it happened once when we went to Universal. Oh, here, I see. Yeah, that. That's picture yeah, right there. Yeah. So when, when we went to Universal, Iowa, the doctor said uh, she gave him, you know, more weight. So she needs some little bit of exercise, you know, and some food. So when we came by, I took her to the gym. And right after, when, we went, when I went to drop her in the morning at the school, so I told the school that, oh, she need, if they had some, you know, play there, like, you know, exercise, like, you know, gym, so she need to be part of it, so she can, you know, take exercise to lose a little bit of weight. So that's why yeah. you see over yeah. there, it was at the school. Yeah. You know, just looking at those pictures, and I'm sure, you know, hopefully our, our uh, audience, I'm sure, will appreciate, you know, sharing all these pictures with them too, and while you are telling the story. Uh, you know, I cannot help it but to say that, yes, you know, sometimes we might go through certain situations that might be a tough situation, might be a difficult situation, but, but guess what? Uh, it's the most important thing is the ending. And we do have definitely a very happy ending. We have Melita yes. in front of us and she's cancer free. And this is definitely the most important thing. And I see more, more pictures coming here. Uh, if we just uh, roll those pictures a little bit, uh, maybe, okay. uh, yeah, faster, so just to keep like the uh, the time and the topic going. But those those are an amazing. I mean, look look at this yeah, that's, one. That's what in Florida. Yeah, that was um, a make a wish. Yes, to have yeah. that privilege to go see the I mean to go see Disney World. Disney Disney, World. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, that's where when we enter to Florida, that's our house. Oh, yeah. Gift cake the world. Yeah, we <sighs> live to gift cake the world. So we first take that picture to make the history because I just, no, I just want to tell the whole Iowa, the citizens of Iowa, a big thanks, a big shout out to them because if it were not them, we won't be sitting here today. Yes, yes. I just want to tell them thank you. Yes, and thank Iowa you. is a great place to live. If you want to raise a family, this is a great place to live Definitely. because they show to people that you are home. Yes, yes, yeah, and, and that is very important. That yeah. is very important, you know, it's it just like, 
uh, that, that's why I say like we do have a community that cares. All right, yeah. that's yeah. that's basically you're saying over there is when uh, she been diagnosed and she went on a surgery. So after the surgery, you know, they put out that uh, little cloth. So mm -hmm. as you can see, when somebody is done or sick, when you go to the hospital, they always give you the cloth to be like, you know, discretion. Yeah. So that's the photo over there after her surgery and she tried to take a meal. Yeah, yeah. Well, Milita, I want to ask you, how, how are you at school now? Um, I'm actually doing pretty well. I, I, I know, I think I know that you are well involved. Tell us about some of your involvement. Um, I did Bas volleyball, but volleyball season's now over. I'm doing basketball. I'm also in choir. I'm planning on doing show choir. And I don't know if there's any other sports I'm gonna do yet, but. So you keep yourself very active, right? Yes. And very busy too. Yep. Ah, oh, wow. So what do you do for fun, besides that school stuff? Um, I hang out with my friends and yeah. my cousins. That's, that's great. That is great, I yeah. Like uh, what, what, watch movies. That's what I want to say. Like you know, because that's, <laughs> yeah. that's a normal thing to hear from you know, from usually kids. I want to, yeah. That, that's what I call you, uh, as I call my uh, my sons the same thing. Kids, you know, they love to watch videos and and movies and so on. That is very nice. Uh, tell me, what do you like to do in the future? Actually, I don't know yet. All I know is that I just like want to have my own company. Okay. And have a lot of money. And like some of the money, I like planning on using it to like to build an orphanage. Excellent! Wow! 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 You know, you. Are, I want to tell you something. You are an amazing person. I just want you to know that. Right, and we are very lucky to have you. Uh, you know, as I always say, you know, you 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 bring the best yeah. and special guests to this show to share their stories with us. Um, the most important thing that we definitely have a very happy story, uh, a story that started perhaps uh, with some uh, some. Uh, problems, issues, I'm sure some pain too, and tears, but it ended to be a happy story. So as I always say, um, you know, our show is here and well available to share those stories with our community. If you have any question and or comment, or if you have any idea for any story, please call me at 563- 288-6064, or you can email me at jdebate at eicc.edu. Till next time, Muscatine. Bye-bye.